double fisting. I had two cigars in my hand, he had two in his, and we're like, you're going this way and this way. I just did it as an homage, and come to find out, it, I was homaging <laughs> something that I didn't know enough about. <laughs> How did you get that picture of me? I go, that's not you, that's hot Latinas. <laughs> So, <laughs> so we love broadleaf cigars, and broadleaf cigars. You do, and broadleaf cigars. And apparently, unbeknownst to yourself, you created the only all broadleaf cigar ever by accident, kind of. Uh, well, I don't know. Someone else probably did it. Uh, I just, I had a conversation with in a, like a broadleaf guy in an American-made cigar company. And I was telling him why I did this brand called La Casita Criolla. Yeah. It was like an homage to all broadleaf cigars. And he goes, yeah, but those cigars weren't all broadleaf. And I'm like, they weren't? And he goes, no, we put 100% authentic broadleaf. And I'm thinking, I thought the 100% meant the whole thing. No, it was just the wrapper was real broadleaf. <laughs> so I'm sure someone else has done it. I just did it as an homage and come to find out it. I was homaging <laughs> something that I didn't know enough about. <laughs> I, would, I would kill to try an all broadleaf cigar, and I just but I have, I, some, I have some, so I'll find I'll find some, I'll dig them out, and I'll send you some. Great. If it's really good, bring it back into production, maybe. Uh, maybe. I mean, Jaime's got a lot of broadleaf, so there's there's a very good potential that I could uh, go back and deep dive that again. I think that's leaf has more flavor than any other leaf yeah i'll play around with it next time i'm in nicaragua i'll get my nephew handy to to pull out a bunch of broadleaf and all the primings and textures and i'll see what we can come up with that'd be, that'd be really awesome i'd be i'd be on board to buy as many boxes as i can afford well it could suck it, it could <laughs> it's just super one-dimensional i don't know no yeah the one we did was not one-dimensional but it was a lover hate cigar yeah. and for sure it was I got a lot of mixed reviews. And it was like, there was no middle of the road on it. It was like, love? Hey. What cigar does everybody love? Is there any one cigar that everyone agrees is good? Oh, no, yeah. But this was like, eh, you know, you didn't get a, it's okay. You got, I hated it, or you got, I love it. So. That sounds pretty good to me. So, we, we're coming out with our cigar pack company. Yeah. Right? Republic of Cigars. Back, by the way. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Welcome to the show. Again. But dumped so much money into this channel and really haven't gotten much back from it. So we're good. like, it's, let's turn it into something else. It, right? Yeah. Something else. yeah. So in our experiment, you should, do, you should get an extra mic. Yeah, I know. I know. I know. <laughs> My arm is very sore right now, too. It's, just, it's very tired. <laughs> I'll speak up so you don't have to, you don't have to get close. <laughs> I'm just going to hand you the mic after this next one. All right. So of all the cigars we tested, we we thought we were going to throw in a bunch of cigars with the companies that we know and love already yeah. and uh and also the companies that we like do some business with that pay us to make content for them we're like we're going to show them some love but we ended up we ended up finding all these cigars that we'd never even tried before that we'd never give the time of day to and la dueña was one of those never heard of it <laughs> <laughs> so that actually out of the two or three hundred cigars that we tried over the last four or five months we were smoking like 20 at a time like I, yeah we were double fisting i had two cigars in my hand he had two in his and we're like you're going this way and this way <laughs> okay <laughs> and we're like sharing cigars in a cigar lounge and the people are staring at us like these fuckers are so <laughs> no you can't say i'm it. just like this, yeah, yeah. i'll bleep it out these fuckers are so something um so it's not the fuckers that's the problem <laughs> so like i'm handing him a cigar this is, like, this is a really good try you know you could just say they're so Jesse. So Jesse? Jesse. Jesse. <laughs> that was a compliment, I'm sure. <laughs> so, but uh, that was that cigar was our favorite of all. And that has a lot of broadleaf in it, so it makes sense for us. Yeah, about, uh, well, not quite half, uh, maybe close. Um, a little bit of broadleaf in the filler. One of the binders is broadleaf, and then the wrapper. So, to us... To me, it tasted like popcorn, like butter drizzled popcorn. Oh, I like that. <laughs> I've gotten popcorn before. I get a lot of peanut butter. Yeah. That's something I get off a of broadleaf. Every once in a while, I'll get a peanut butter characteristic. It's weird, though. 
I think it's just how certain cigars have been aging or processed because every once in a while it could be a Corojo or or broadly if I'll get this weird peanut butter I'm like wow it's peanut butter it's kind of cool I like it um, but popcorn I like that one that was that's what we got so we ended up renaming our whole pack from badass broadleaves to buckets of butter <laughs> I, I like the name I like the name we hope everyone else does too so but the story behind the La Duena is pretty interesting so I was hoping you could tell that to these people over here now I'm going to hand you the mic because my arm is like numb. No, no, you're going to have to hold the mic. <laughs> <laughs> because you want me to tell the story, so I'm going to let, I'm going to torture you. That's fair. That's fair. Uh, it's a long story, but I'll, I'll get into it. Yanni Garcia, my now wife, um, was traveling a lot for the for the family. And we were doing a lot of uh, joint events. Or Tatuai My Father events, or My Father Tatuai events, whatever you want to call it. And I, you know, her dad and her brother were not traveling as much because they were in the factory working. But Jaime had a cigar, and he had a broadleaf cigar. And Papin has a bunch of cigars. But she's the face of my father, who was also a Papin cigar blended by Jaime. I was like, you should have your own brand. She goes, yeah, but no, it's my dad and my, my brother. I was like, no, I'm gonna I'm gonna make a cigar. And I knew she liked La Riqueza, which is a broadleaf wrapper cigar that I make. Or I made, but I make still a little bit. And uh, ultimately I was going down to the factory like that year, I think I was in the factory 14 times that year. And uh, I was going in and and making samples of this mix of broadleaf and and Nicaraguan tobaccos based off of the La Riqueza base, but I was replacing certain leaves with broadleaf. Ultimately, I did that for almost a year. And I remember walking into my brother-in-law's office in the factory. I know you're dying right now. <laughs> I'm going to talk slower. <laughs> Thank you. He's such a scholar and a gentleman. <laughs> I walked into my brother-in-law's office and he goes, what samples are those? And I said, uh, La Duena. He goes, no more samples. I need you to order. And I said, Jaime, this is not my cigar. This is your cigar, so you need to place the order. And they finally placed the order, but originally he wanted to place a smaller order. And I convinced him to go up. But that bigger order still didn't carry the show. They actually sold out of everything the, like the first day of the show. So it ended up becoming this like big, big initial burst. But then it kind of slowly trickled off and people forgot about it. And people don't know it's on my father. They look at the band and it, because I designed the band and the label. I didn't tell you this story yesterday. So I designed the band and the, and the, and the box label and everything. And there's a picture of Yanni that I absolutely love that someone had took, taken of her years ago. And I was trying to recapture that picture but I couldn't find a way to vectorize that picture enough to get the shape of what I wanted, like a cameo. So I I found a font. Like a, like a silhouette? Yeah, a silhouette. But you know how the old cameos, like yes. the old cameo, that's what the whole feel of that label's supposed to be like, an old cameo. And I found a font in Illustrator, or maybe a defont, you know, .com, and it was called Hot Latinas. <laughs> <laughs> Swear to God. It was, I swear to God. And it was all these like sexy pose Latinas, like something you see on the back of a Mack truck or something. Yeah. And I zoomed in real, like vectorized it, zoomed in real close, and I cut the head off and I rounded it out in the bottom to make it like a cameo or a silhouette. And I lengthened the hair and I showed her the picture with the band. I said, What do you think? She goes, How did you get that picture of me? I go, no, it's not you. That's hot Latinas. <laughs> so, I like to play around in Illustrator a little bit. So I, I, I sit there and design bands. But ultimately, the, the brand kind of like faded out because it was a crossover between Tatuaje and my father. Yeah. It doesn't get a lot of love. I think it deserves way more love. Um, there's, it, It's very regional in the sense where there are some reps that really pay attention to it. And some stores that 
buy it because they don't realize like wow like this is kind of like my own thing because not a lot of stores carry it um so it it, it does well but not not nearly as well, obviously, as my father or Jaime Garcia. It's, it's a heavily underrated cigar. I think, hopefully, with these packs we put out and, like, this interview and whatever, some people start buying more of it because that is a fantastic cigar. It's full of flavor. Medium body, full flavor. Yes. Yeah, then that's the whole point behind that cigar. It was supposed to be... It wasn't built for a woman. It was built for the everyday smoker. Because just because it has her image on it doesn't mean it's a women's cigar. I, may, I think guys are afraid of it. I think so. That might be... I was going to say... I don't know. It's kind of weird. There's a girl on it. It's made for girls. Gender in cigars for me. Like, there is no gender in cigars. My sister-in-law will smoke every guy under the table. Like, she she smokes more cigars than everybody I know. And um, the reality, except for maybe Dan, but um, there is no gender in cigars. You can't think that oh a woman came into the lounge let's give her a flavored cigar that's bullshit and don't give a don't give a guy a big six by six he thinks that he's gonna like it cuba a long time ago cuba came out with a romeo and julieta that was marketed to women like it's a women's cigar and the guys were like pissed and the women got pissed because like we don't want our own cigar we want that cigar that you're not marketing to women we're already smoking cigars we didn't need one just for us yeah, so I think that's kind of bullshit. So it, to, to label a cigar as a gender, it's fucked up. Actually, the the guy that I met Caleb through, right? He was an Emmy Award winning videographer, and I, uh, yeah, the guy behind the guy behind the camera, uh, he was an Emmy Award winning videographer. He, he worked on uh, with the guy that did Cocaine Cowboys and stuff. Oh, right on. And uh, I went over to his house one day to work on a video with him. And uh, I brought cigars over. He's a he he, like female Coke and male Coke, and said, "You choose." <laughs> no, his uh, white. Mad joke. I, no mad joke. <laughs> but um, he, I brought these cigars over. I was like, "You want to have a cigar?" He's like, "No, I don't really like smoking cigars." And his wife, who's a prison guard, goes, "I'll fucking smoke that cigar with you." <laughs> You're like full bodied like you know. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, dude, cigar smokers are just cigar smokers. We're not. We're not. You know, male, female, black, white, you know, whatever. We're just cigar smokers. And we get a lot of bad people on the opposite side that don't like cigar smokers. So we all have to... <laughs> cigar smokers are such great people. Like, We're amazing fucking people, dude. I mean, we say fuck a lot, but we're amazing fucking people. I mean, there's don't understand that this industry is way better than most industries I've ever been in. Absolutely, hands down. Like, there's... And at the lounge next to my house, uh, Smoke on the Water... Um, You're right there? Yeah, right. Oh, shit, man. I'll drive up and see you. I'll drive down to see you. I love, I love smoking in the water. It's a great lounge. Dan is a great guy. He's one of the best in the industry. Yeah. Um, but they have this, like, super liberal white guy, but he has dreads, Rastafarian from New York. And then they have this, like, gun-toting, like, redneck. And they scream at each other all day, and then they laugh and hug each other. And, like, you can't, you won't find that anywhere in America right now. Exactly. Exactly. And that's how... Like, that's what I grew up with. So I never looked at that. There's, there's, for me, cigars, cigar smokers are their own little breed of people. And we all need to be together because eventually someone's going to tap us on the shoulder and say, you can't smoke cigars anymore. So. That day's coming. And that, that's when, that's when the uprising's going to happen. <laughs> yeah. There will be an uprising. There will be an uprising. Back to the La, the La Duena. There's a uh, little bit more interest in there. Is how you came up with the name. Ah, well. You have Don Pepin, right? Yeah, I was going to do... Avoiding lawsuit. And I went to the USPTO to register La Doña, and I realized that it's owned by another family on the trade show floor. A very big family. <laughs> family that's known to uh, use lawyers often. Yeah, well, yeah, but they're friends of mine, but I would never go against them. Um, but yeah, it, La Doña is owned by Fuente, and, I, and they had registered just shortly before I was going to do it. So I was like, what else can I do? And there was a soap opera that I happened to watch with my wife. I didn't understand a word of it because it was Spanish, but it was called Soy Tu La Dueña. And I'm like, that works. It just happened to be on the TV, and you're like, oh, that's good. I'll take that. Yeah, well, I needed a replacement for La Dueña, so La Dueña made sense. Have you been looking for it, or it just, like, happened? Well, I was looking for another name that I could give that cigar. And La Duena made sense. And actually, La Duena sounds a lot younger than La Doña, which means it seems like you're older. And 
I uh, like tell my wife you're old is like <laughs> not a good idea. That's a good way to get on the couch. Yeah. <laughs> well, Pete, we, Lauren's a good way to get on the couch too. <laughs> do you do that? She kick you out of? Uh, no, she just tells me to roll over. <laughs> <laughs> she just hits you in your sleep. I mean, you want me to hold that for you? I'm, I'll I'll do this. For you. We're at the end, anyways. <laughs> well, it was a great time. Actually, I wanna. How are you doing today? Are you? <laughs> Really How are you today? Good. I'm doing pretty fucking good. Yeah. Well, you like the wine? I do like the wine. I was going to ask, do you sell this? Uh, we don't sell it. We just make it for fun. Like but we, we, we stopped making it because ultimately it was a, a giant vanity project. Uh, just a way for me to test my blending and I realized I had too much of it. So I stopped. I mean, you're good at blending here too. So Thank you very, thank you very much. And for, for what were you guys called now? Republic of Debauchery is a media company. Yeah, I know, but what's the, the so new... Republic of Cigars. Republic of Cigars, out. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I got cushion. I got cushion.